Hey everyone, Tech Sags Rewind, David Nuno here with a bunch of misfits. Say hey, everybody. Hey. One person said hey. <laughs> that, that was uh, ridiculous. All right, we had a fun show today. I had a little rant uh, on fake accounts. Seriously, I'll say it again and you'll hear it from me in a second. If you make a fake account with a fake name and you troll people, you're a loser. But you can hear a little bit about that in a little bit. Connor O'Gara says A&M has passed uh, Texas. We knew that, but it's nice to hear Saturday Down South say it or one of their members. Also, we had John Harris on the show. Love John Harris. He uh, kind of describes the Mac years versus now. It hasn't been so rosy for Texas. And of course, the great Billy Lucci on Oklahoma. Yeah, you're the big loser here. And I do want to throw this out there, Richard. I got a tweet and I, I get these all the time. Just from official Aggie meltdown, Aggie spelled with a Y, 2025. And he's laughing about whatever. And, and like, I just want to say this out loud. And look, I'm not saying that our fan, fan base doesn't make these same kind of moves, but you don't have to agree with me. I'm going to say it. If you are a 50-year-old man and you make a fake Twitter account that all you want to do is bash Aggies, you're a loser. You're the biggest of losers. Not a criminal. Maybe. Maybe on the side. But if you have time to send tweets all day and make fake accounts like and you have a job in life, go be with your kids, man. Go enjoy family time. Go to the gym. You know, read a book to write a fake account to just, oh, I'm going to troll Aggies. Yeah, this is my self-worth. I'm so cool that I say mean things about other schools. Loser. I think that's, that's perfect. You summed it up. And every school, and it seems like every fan base and every sport or I mean, it could go beyond. There are people that create fan accounts like that for musical artists where they'll yeah. troll like the whole Kanye Taylor Swift thing. They'll troll each other. It's just, if you're a troll, an internet troll. You're a loser. You're a loser. You're a, a, in fact, sorry, if, if, you, if you're listening to the show like, wait, I do that. Is he talking about? Yes. Talking about you. Don't make fake accounts. Be a person. Yeah. Okay. I understand we have like little internet names. Like I know yours is, you know what, blindfolded bat. Is that yours? How'd you know? Well, <laughs> I Googled. But look, I get it. But you, I, I really subscribe to this methodology. And I teach my kids this. And I can't say that I'm always this guy. But if you have nothing nice to say, don't say it. How about that? Be nice. Every once in a while, we can argue. We can disagree. Uh, and I think that's what makes college sports so great, right? Like you get on a, you know, oh, yeah, ags, ags take this, right? But like to, to make an account and like, oh, <laughs> I'm laughing at you, a and I'm going to tell you why we're big brother and you're not. <laughs> and loser, like just, just go be a dad. You know, call your wife on the phone. Tell her hello. Uh, do some th production at work. File a TPS report. Don't just make fake accounts and tweet all day. Loser. Doing work's not nearly as fun as firing off tweets. No. I'm so. going to make a fake account and start going at you guys. How about that? I'm going to be the blind bat 2419. Go for it. It's all, all right. you. I apologize. I'll give you the login if you want. If you're a loser listening to this show, continue to listen. And I'll also and have to remind people, winning the SEC is very hard, right? Like, and I know that goes without saying, but, I mean, you could be one of the best teams in the world, yet you got to go to Ole Miss, you got to go to LSU, you host Alabama. I mean, as good as you are, it is a grind in the SEC. Texas was out here talking about being back. And A&M has had two seasons in the SEC that have been, I, I would say, significantly better than that. I, I think you would say that 2020 was significantly better than that. I think you would say the Manziel season was significantly better than that. And right now, Texas is in this place where, yeah, it can do some things in the Big 12, but what's it going to look like on a week-in, week-out basis when you're going into these places where, man, you're lucky if you're only going into a road game where they have 60,000 fans. I mean, this is the SEC where, you know, there, there are just packed houses on packed houses, even the, the places that don't have 80,000 fans like a South Carolina, you know, it's Mississippi State and you've got the cowbells to deal with. I'm not saying that Texas can't hang because I absolutely think that they'll be able to do some things and, and make some noise in the SEC. And they're doing this move to elevate their ceiling. I think they've seen their ceiling for the last decade, but I, I just think that it, it's going to be a, a difficult transition early on, at least until, and especially if it happens in 2022, 2023. It's going to take some time for Texas to get on that level and to truly be back. People talk about this Great dominance point. of Texas has had, John. You could remind the, the audience 
The 80s belonged to A&M. The 90s were pretty good to A&M. Yeah, the early 2000s weren't too 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 good to us, but the Johnny era happened. Uh, there was a little bit of a middle p- tier that didn't feel so good, and now the Jimbo era is happening. A&M has not been a bad program. It's been a phenomenal program for the last 30 years. Well, I, you know, this whole thing about, you know, University of Texas being the dominant program or whatever over the last how many ever years. I mean, in all honesty, if you want to think about it this way, the Mac years, so Mac gets there in 98. The Mac years from 98 to 2009, that's more the aberration than it is the truth. Because like you said, after Texas in 77 goes and gets beat by Notre Dame in the national, essentially the national championship game in the Cotton Bowl, what, what did they do for the next 77 through the 80s through the early 90s all the way up to 1998? Like, what did they do over that period? You know, and even that, that national championship game in 77, even before that, they won the championship in 69. Then they went back in 70, and I think they got a piece of it. But then even that period before 77, it was kind of like, eh, it was a little dicey there. Then they have this big period of 77, essentially, through 98. Then you fast forward to them. Okay, 2009, they get to the national championship game, and then Colt leaves. And what have you had from 2009 through now? So to me, that little 1998 through 2009 is almost the aberration as opposed to the rule. a ms come into the SEC. I don't even think it's arguable, inarguable that it's the best conference in college football and produced a Heisman Trophy winner in 2012, a top five finish in 2012, a top five finish in 2020. And along the way, CFP, they were in the final four, um, not they didn't finish in the final four, but they were in the top four I know one of the playoff rankings, I think it was Trevor Knight's year, 2016. I can't remember the exact year. AM has been way more relevant on a football perspective, especially since going into the SEC. And Texas has been done, has been doing anything. I mean, when the when the the meme of the University of Texas is we're back, well, what does that tell you? It means they were gone. And then they weren't even back. <laughs> and to, th- this is the one thing to me. That kind of said everything about the University of Texas. Last year, and look, I can tell you I haven't gone through this. I know a lot of people know this, but COVID was a monster on just logistics, football, ev- everything last year. Like, I get it. But last year, University of Texas loses to Oklahoma. I, I'm trying to remember. They, they lost to others. Anyways, they get to kind of a in the championship game or not game, winner take all sort of thing against Iowa State, right? They lose the game in Austin to Iowa State. Now say that 10 times. Texas lost to Iowa State to go to the Big 12 championship game. And then tell me who's more relevant. But beyond that, here's the other thing. Because I don't believe this would ever have happened at AM and it didn't happen at AM. When Texas lost that game and was out of the championship chase, four captains from Texas left. Left. Done. I'm, 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 I'm done. I've had enough. I'm going on. Four. Captains. Left. How many players left A&M before the end of the season from last year? Much less captains. Nobody. Now, I know there were some people that, that checked out at the beginning of the year. I get that. Jamon Osmond. But how many? Is the season going on with two games left and a potential bowl game and captains are ducking out? Now, Nobody. to me, that tells the story of where the football programs are right now. Now, we all know this is not all about football, but we do know a lot of it is about the business of football. So from that perspective, yes, I can totally understand and I completely understand why Aggies felt the way they did the last week. But here's the one way that you can all feel that much better, and that's when they do meet in 2025. That there is a Bebo butt kicking that follows. And that is the ultimate scoreboard. That is the ultimate scoreboard. All right, uh, guys, we're going to call it a show here. So let's do this. Let's ask Richard Zane what you're supposed to do. Richard, what are you supposed to do? Smash the like button and subscribe. Okay, do that. What are you supposed to do? Smash the like button. Subscribe. You? 
Who's the best host of this show, this particular show? <laughs> He's got a point. <laughs> He's got a point. All right, thanks so much for watching, guys.